music off now. Even though I like Ready? it. Oh, yeah. Here we go. That's good. Hey, guys. Hey, everyone. We got people on Facebook. Hey, Gregory. And YouTube. And we also got our group here for the uh, uh, course on how to change your body by changing your mind. I know I'm a little bit crooked on some of these, but good to see you guys. Those of you who would like to join me on the live course that we have on uh, talent, Rita, you may want to go ahead and just copy those links and put them on Facebook and on YouTube. So, all right, so today we're going to get started with you can change your body, heal your body by changing your mind or your memories. And of course, uh, some of the biggest things that I see people who, um, who are coming in to uh, Fast Drift T, whether they're coming in through, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this frozen with me, uh, and uh, uh, with physical pains, and they're coming from different modalities or no modalities, or they're lost, they tried everything, and nothing has really worked for them. And, um, and the reason that is, is because the, the wisdom, the wisdom of the ages actually is knowing the mental mechanics of how our brain works and how to shift and change what's inside your own head. Uh, uh, of course, you know, I teach you taptics, faster of tea, and basically it's understanding the neuroplasticity of the mind and how the mind works and how to create deep unconscious changes. And so I'm going to go over in the next, it's, uh, we got nine hours, we got three hours a day, we got um, three hours next week and three hours the following week. And that is, I'm gonna walk you through and we will do some tapping on uh, some issues and we'll have maybe have someone who volunteer to help us work on, on, on how the brain works and also how to rewrite your story. So, and we may have some people we may interview just depending on who it is that's with us. I know we have uh, several people who started this course, who's on this course here, uh, who started out very ill. I mean, like, uh, severely chemical sensitive, fibromyalgia, you know me, back pain, shoulder pain, brain pain, headaches, migraines, you name it. And one, is either gone, or two, it's lessened tremendously. And all, a lot of people I know that um, have tried a lot of stuff and it hasn't helped, maybe helped some, but it's still there. And it kind of reminds me when I was, when uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the, um, ladies who uh, back in early days like 2002 four five six seven um i can see her in my mind i don't remember what her name is but she said robert you know i'm having these hot flashes and they go really fast when i tap but they keep coming back so how do you how do you keep them from coming back and i said well the key is is remembering that if you understand the structure of pain and what its purpose is uh and the purpose of pain really is is trying to keep you safe, keep you alive, keep you in alignment for where you're coming from and keep you in alignment with the previous pains. And I said, what we need to do is change what you believe about it. So what is it you believe about these migraines? And so when she started addressing this simple structure, they stopped, I mean, not migraines, I said um, hot flashes. It works the same with migraines too, but it just ended. You know, of course her testimony was out there floating on my one of my YouTube channels somewhere. So uh, just knowing how the, the brain actually works also creates um, not only personal power, but the ability to shift and change your, your, your self-esteem, your relationships, your finances, your health. Everything can change by merely changing how and what you hold inside your mind. So, so today I'm gonna basically kind of cover some of the major pieces that creates the shift and that has a lot to do with what's in your head and what's in your head is what your brain will do now here's a bizarre thing is a lot of people says well i never think about that i never go back and visit that i never i don't even know why i'm sick i just know i'm sick and there's also another piece to illnesses and that is um you know i call it affirmations and again what are affirmations and affirmations are anything you affirm, which means if you worry about something and you imagine what you worry about, that's an affirmation because what is an affirmation? Anything you affirm, anything you feel to be true, anything that you practice and rehearse. It doesn't have to be positive. It could be 100% negative, but you have to understand 
The foundation of your brain, and that's not you consciously understanding, the foundation or the mental mechanics of the brain is to keep you in alignment with what it holds and what it captured and what it witnesses. And this is the, the natural uh, mechanics, the natural chemistry, the natural system that keeps us repeating it over and over again. Um, and, I, and somebody just said, well, what about if you have voices in your head? And I see what else I can't say, oh, I missed it. Um, anyway, what if you have, you know, you know, fear is always in your head, you're feeling not good enough, etc. How do you deal with these strong emotions? Now, again, where do we get these things? Hey, Nicole, where do we get these programs that you're now operating with after you left home or even while you're still at home? And that is because of emotional conditionings and also what you personally and emotionally experienced. Now, this is way beyond logic. Now, logically, you know, you think, well, I shouldn't have this problem. Logically, I shouldn't be doing these things inside of our head. And the fact is, is when you start learning to know yourself, hey, Robert Sanders, um, learning how your brain actually works, and that's the mechanics, the physical mental mechanics. And that's what I wanna step into. Um, and a lot of illnesses, you know, we talk about pain, we talk about illnesses, a lot of illnesses, physical pains, um, I call them, basically I say that the pain in your body is unresolved emotional issues, crying. And it's crying to get your conscious attention so that you might figure out how to change what it is that you carry. Yeah, there's a lot of trans monkeys behind me and I know one of them's you back there. So anyway, so the trans monkeys we have behind us is, it's, it's, it's one, it represents everyone in the world and that we're all trans monkeys. And a trans monkey is someone who automatically responds without even knowing why they respond. And that's why a lot of illnesses are, uh, are um, the brain or the memories inside the brain uh, expressing what it experienced. And so who's a trans monkey? We all are. What is a trans monkey? Someone automatically responds what's inside their head. And again, the quality of your life, my life, is determined by what we hold within our mind. So the quality of your life is determined by your internal communication. Knowing how to change what it, how your brain communicates to you, within you, and you change the resources, your mind will and body will change. So, so there's a lot of people who are here on this call from all the different venues. Um, I know the Facebook page and the YouTube page, this will not be the whole three hours. We'll give you just a little bit to get you started. If you want to join us in this course, this, like I said, it's going to be nine hours worth of training and it'll be one-on-one -on -one with us and other people who will want to also learn the secrets because especially you guys on YouTube, you guys watch me on YouTube and the guys on Facebook, you know, a lot of you think you know a lot about what I teach. There's a lot I do teach, but there's like a loads more. And also like people say, I'm so glad I was in this course because the pieces now fit together. I now understand how my mind works and how my life works. So, and also how to get control. So um, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity for all of us to grow and change. I personally, you know, when I first started this, um, you know, cause some of you may probably heard my story. I started out, you know, with, studying NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. I'm coming from the church, biblical studies, biblical studies was my major, uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, and um, started using that. It actually started changing my life. And then I bought the EFT course, which is a tapping modality. Um, and then I started building on top of that and combining a lot of my learnings to create what I now, what we now call uh, your taptics and faster FT which um, it's a very dynamic system because it's a complete operating system. It has a philosophy of why we have problems, how we have problems, and how to change the problems, and also knowing the mental mechanics within yourself. So my whole goal as a coach or a neuroplastician or a behavioral engineer is when you come to see me or you watch my stuff is that I want you to be fully in control of your life. I want you to be able to direct your life and create the life you want, to heal your body, heal your relationships, heal your finances, and anything else that you think is a problem. Now, of course, my mindset and philosophy about problems is this, or illnesses is this, or relationship issues is this. It is your brain trying to keep you alive and keep you safe in alignment to what you've captured in your mind. 
you're not broken, there's nothing wrong with you, and you're doing a great job, whatever it is that you are now doing. So if you don't like the results you currently have, and you don't like how you feel, and you don't like what, what's going on in your life, in order to get something better, you gotta change what's already inside your head. And the way to do that is to clean yourself up. That means, you know, I don't know, some of you guys probably have been around all the healing networks and all the different modalities and the spiritual gurus or whatever else they are out there. And they say, know yourself, you know, make peace with yourself, you know, or um, stop that inside your head. And a lot of people go, well, okay, that sounds great. How do you do that? And they don't have the answer. And so what we're gonna do is we'll give you the answer. This is the answer. This is what you've been looking for. This is what I've been looking for. And it is, it is so effective, you know. So if somebody says, Con Connie, uh, she says, found you recently and started tapping a week ago. Have chemical sensitivities, pot, CFS. Through tapping, I'm starting to think my husband linked, is linked to this. Can I heal while married to him? Of course. Um, and one of the things about pain and about um, illnesses, allergies, um, uh, what happens is, is that the brain has experiences and it will link these experiences to people, events, sounds, smells, and it could be also a reflection of something else earlier. It could represent a relationship with your mom, your brother, your uncle, your dad, whoever it is that had what we would call an emotional impact. And then we have a tendency to go and find that same person in a different pair of shoes with a different name, a different shoe size, but we still respond the same way. And it's not them, you have to understand, uh, when we're ill, when we're having problems, we say, you make me feel bad. And that means you're operating what we would call from the lower model of the world. That means you're helpless, no control, and they have the power and the ability to mess up your life just because they're in your presence or they say something. Now, it doesn't mean that there aren't people who are, have problems who are emotionally not so stable, but again, it is your translation and how you hold and represent that. The weird thing is, you know, some people ask me, well, do you ever work with children? I said, every day, every session. It's, we're dealing with children's stuff. We're dealing with programming from our past and from our childhood. So um, uh, we have Barbara, she's asking here, she goes, can asthma be healed with, with EFT? Well, we're using faster of T, but is asthma an illness? Well, according to the medical community, that is an illness and it could kill you, but what is asthma? You know, I remember her name is Sarah. Sarah had severe adult asthma. And that means HEPA, fire, HEPA purifier in her car, HEPA purifier at home. She had inhalers, she had all this stuff, had a specialized asthma doctor, severe adult asthma for 18 years. Now she came to see me and we started working on other emotional events. All right, uh, one day, you know, after we deal with, you know, we dealt with rapes and beatings and abuses and rejections and moms and dads and boyfriends and you name it, all of this stuff, pillow suffocation, etc. Uh, and one day she comes in and goes, cure my asthma. I said, well, I don't know, we could give it a go. And so I started working on this and come to find out after we're done, that two hour session, the asthma was gone. And it was gone for a long time. And one year later, I mean, this is a severe adult asthma, severe, her controlled her whole life. Uh, one year later, she called me and said, I think it's trying to come back. And I said, well, come on in, let's see what we can pick up, figure out what it is. So what happened is an emotional event occurred. She went with her mom, she was stuck in this limo with her and mom was smoking and it caused a little bit of an asthma issue. Not big like it was before. And so we addressed that and it was emotionally linked. And then um, it was gone. And then probably three years later, she, you know, I'm at a health fair and she said, Robert, she walked in, she gave me a big hug. She said, I was thinking about you today. I was missing my flowers and normally I'd have an asthma attack doing that. And then now we meet. So it is interesting how the brain controls the body. And you can always check out and check this to be true. When your emotional stuff is up, guess what happens to your body? It screams. Yeah, so it works with everything. And the reason why this works with everything because you're working with the inside of the mind inside of the mind and how the mind is creating this. And I'll go more into details later. Sherry says, my daughter has social anxiety. Can, can faster to your tactics help with this? And I said, of course. 
anxiety, social anxiety, is built from emotional experiences, fears, and anxiety. So this system works with everything that deals with mind, memories, and emotions. And the body too, because remember, in my world, we see the body as uh, an honest communication or an honest expression of what is held within the mind. And so, so we're going to talk about body pain. We're going to talk about memory pain. We're going to talk about emotional pain. And uh, we just had a seminar in, um, in Vegas. And uh, one of the level one practitioners, he said, you know, Robert, um, I had a 20 page, um, uh, 20 pages of um, a peace list. That's all the bad stuff I have. 20 pages, double-sided. And she said, I'm 80% cleaned up, rewritten, positive affirmations were created with this, and my health is 80% better. Chronic fatigue, POTS, Lyme disease, fading off by merely changing the mind. So the mind is, is a very powerful uh, mechanism. And I know Sue LaRue, I don't know if she's floating around here somewhere, but she, uh, she, had, um, she had bursitis in her shoulder, 40 years of bursitis. And... Um, uh, she came to one of my free seminars and uh, she walks with a walker. So she has a walker It's a, and she's been walking with a walker most of her life. Uh, she had what, 19 orthopedic surgeries. She's in her 60s at the time. And so she's at home and she has pain in her shoulder, whichever one it was. And it's, it's really bad. So she's already laying in bed and she's been taking like 20 pills a day to manage her pain. And so it was gonna be another act of Congress, or big work to get out of bed, walk, walk over to, to where the medication is, get back in bed. So she thought she would just use and mimic what I've taught her. And she said, I don't know how long it was, 30 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, I don't know. But she said, when I'm done, the bursitis pain was gone and it completely gone. And so, and so this has been going on for 40 years. Now, 10 years later, 10 years later, she's now in her 70s, she goes to the doctor, the doctor has what you call an ultrasound or whatever it is that and she can, he can see inside the joint and he goes, how much medication are you taking for this, the pain in your shoulder? He says, I'm not taking anything. And he goes, how can you not be? It's bone to bone. How can you not be in pain? And that is because the mind has this ability to either amplify pain or dull pain or get rid of pain completely. And I've seen it lots of times, you know, Paul's another guy who said, 13 angiograms, pain, nerve damage in his growing area. And same basic scenario, he comes to see me. He's, I said, well, what's going on? How did it happen? And so he's going through a divorce. He hated his wife. He's pissed off at the doctors and all this stuff going on in his life. So I clean this up. I address the body's memory pain about the pain and we change that. He walks out without pain. Three months later, he walks, he comes and sees me, brings me a stack of papers, say, look, the doctor says I'm supposed to have nerve damage. I don't have any pain. Where did it go? I said, the doctor's got it now. So, so I hope he feels better. So you can come see us. So that's a joke, by the way. So anyway, so that's, that's how it works. So the brain has amazing capacity to heal itself and to cause pain. And remember, if you look at pain as a, um, it's a, it's trying to protect you. It's trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you in alignment. Um, it, it's, um, it's a positive intention behind it. And of course, if you think about it, you've got to, you've got to, you're a little girl, a little boy, you've got to go to school and you've got to give a, a, you know, a report, a report card, a report in front of the class or whatever it is, and then you're sick. And it's like I worked with a woman just yesterday and you know, here it is, you know, she's five years old, they put her on the bus and they send her to this place and she's scared, she's terrified. She don't know where she's going. She doesn't know what's gonna happen. And they put her in kindergarten. As soon as she gets to her desk, she pukes all over the place. So emotionally traumatized and created a belief system that about school. So we go and we change this memory. And I said, well, what do you think's going on in your mind? Is it really school? She said, I was just so scared. I didn't know what's gonna to happen to me. I didn't know what was gonna occur. So this created um, pain. Again, so if you understand that, that the pain is um, very, very um, uh, self-protective in a sense, and it's trying to do a purpose. Now, let's say, for example, you walk down the street, you fall down, you got a bone sticking out of your arm or your leg, 
of course, that will create pain, but some people will have a little bit of pain and some people be amplified pain. And what makes a difference is internal representations. And of course, um, surgeries, you know, you get, you get surgeries or accidents, your brain amplifies or distorts. So the question is, how does it work? And how do you change that? And that's the million dollar question. Of course, you know, I've been teaching this, how the brain works, and you've seen loads and loads and loads of people who are severely ill, no longer ill. Their life was no longer happy or pleasant. So what we'll do is we'll just walk you through this and walk you through some major foundational pieces that will um, help you uh, learn and discover who you are, how you are, and how to change you. So if anybody have any questions, you can also raise your hand or, and I will, I will um, ask any questions. Again, this is really your seminar. I'm here to help guide you. Uh, I will, we will do some tapping as well. Uh, we got nine hours worth of work and um, it's, gonna, it's gonna help you a bunch. It's gonna help change you in a lot of ways. So, so feel free to, if you, I know, uh, Rita, are you, um, I don't know if you're, uh, Rita's still on here, no. So we probably need to have somebody to help me. Oh, there he is, mentoring team. So Rita, I don't know, are you um, a part of the, um, you may have to help me. Let me see if I can make a host. So you're a host now. Do you wanna handle, do you wanna change the host? So what am I, a host or what am I? Cancel. Hmm. You're Robert Jean Smith. I got you covered. You got me covered, okay. So if you see anybody that needs some help or you need to mute people, maybe tell me what to do. So. So we got some, we got some, we got Nancy here. We got, uh, Nancy, how are you doing? I'm gonna unmute you if you don't mind. Um, all right, Nancy, will not you introduce yourself and tell them about, you've, you've been through a lot of pain as well, haven't you? Oh yeah, I've gotten some good healing through Faster EFT for sure. Yeah. I, um, I started uh, with the online course September of last year, went to level one live, went to level two live, and uh, debated about heal your body, but um, I have done a lot of healing. Just it almost seems unrelated, but I don't do chronic fatigue anymore, which is awesome. My life is changing that way. Um, just a few little sticking points. I still kind of want to clean up here, so that's why I'm here. Good job. So, so I'm just kind of curious because a lot of people may be at the beginning stages. You know, they don't know anything about this stuff. Maybe skeptical. Uh, how was it for you? What was it that made you decide um, to do this? I mean, well, I, I actually got into it because a friend of mine said, hey, I know someone who does this life coaching thing. You need to go see her. I didn't even know it was Faster EFT. Mm -hmm. And then she had a package, which was a better deal. And I thought, well, I'll buy three of them to see how it works. And uh, by the third one, I had changed enough of one of my really, really major traumatic memories that I did work on in several other sessions to clean up bits and pieces of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that I think made the biggest difference was mm -hmm. chunking that thing apart. Um, mm -hmm. And then plus just, I think the community was really helpful watching other people get help and go, it is possible to right. do this. So when you say other community, cause you did, you did do level one online, right? Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. You also, I guess, got here, started getting sessions and also mm -hmm. start practicing. And mm -hmm. then, of course, uh, when level two, you start working on each other. So when you say the community, they support you by helping you. Is that correct? Right. But but even hearing the stories of people, uh, you know, who would get upper level people to help them and how it helped them. And those are, I mean, the testimonies are I think that's part of the placebo, really. You know, that's mm. the good part of it. It just mm. helps you go, yeah, this really does work. This really yeah. does work. <clears throat> Those of you who don't know what the placebo it means, uh, placebo is not the sugar pill that heals you. It's actually the brain healing the body by doing something correctly in the mind. And of course, oftentimes we hear the word placebo means fake, but in our world, placebo might, means the mind's great ability to heal itself and transform mm -hmm. itself by doing something inside of itself to do that so um, that's very important to understand too is that the, the the mind is is the healer you know the mind is the the transformer and when you know how to use your brain to transform itself from inside of itself the body follows so and so so when you're working on yourself I mean obviously you're taking a course and the benefits the one is that you got your your sessions and secondly 
when you, you're level two or level three, what are you? Level two. Level two. So you're taking level two. Right. So, so at level two, you're also doing your practices with this helping. So you're getting changes that way as well. Correct. Very good. And that's the benefit of being in part of the trainings. So is, is that you get help and you also learn how to change yourself and learn how your brain works. So that's good. Well, very good. Very proud of you too. You, this woman, I should, I wish I had pictures of you before, at, before she started, you know, when she came to level, level two or was it level one? When did I see you first? Level one I was in February of this year. All right. So level one this year and looking at you then compared to now, this is not the same woman. And that's what other people have told me is just the confidence level has gone up. And just so a lot of things besides health have yeah. very much improved. Yeah. And again, remember our health is a mirror of reflection of the unpleasant memories that we hold. So obviously you've been changing unpleasant memories. Your self-esteem, personal value goes up and your health improves, which I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to actually see that it is the emotions is uh, affecting our health. Our experiences is affecting our relationship. Our experiences are affecting how we operate. So this is what we're gonna do. We'll walk you through it and help you. I know a lot of guys here that are probably, um, depending on which situ where you are coming from, uh, whether you're in training or not in training, but the most important thing is, is always work on yourself. Always work on yourself, improve yourself and change your memories inside yourself. So good job. Thank you, Nancy. All right. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the guys here on, um, on YouTube. Uh, there's a link down below. If you want to join this group, uh, it is uh, nine hours worth of, of, uh, training and also we'll also have some good stuff too. So, Hey guys, talk to you later. And you two guys on Facebook. Good to see you. Uh, I believe there should be a link if you want to join us on, um, on the course. So talk to you later. Remember, love yourself and like yourself from inside yourself. And in, when you do things inside yourself, do the things that work. Change internal references, change the emotions, change the fears, change the worries. And as you do that, your past changes. You can change uh, how you represent your past. You can't change something that is gone. The past is over, it doesn't exist, but you can change what you hold. And when you change what you hold, your body will uh, change also. So uh, like yourself. Talk to you later, guys. Keep tapping on yourself. Come and see us. See us live too. All right, so I'm going to turn this one off. Huh. Where's the link? Well, somebody should be putting a link down there for you. So, Robert, um, we're not able to put links on for some reason. Uh, it's a privacy uh, thing, so just let right. them know to go to skills to change dot talent LMS dot com. Right. Go to the catalog and join All right. us. All right. So what I'll do is we can probably try to do that later. Put a link, and we will put a link here really quick. I'll see if I can do that as well. And same, same. What about the Facebook group? Could you put stuff there for them? Uh, yes. All right. Good job. Thank you, guys. Talk to you later. Peace out. And there we go.